Hi, mamas, and welcome back for another episode of Moms with Moms. Moms offering mom support with moms on microphones. If you're new here, we have different cups, so go get a different cup, whatever you want. I prefer coffee cups because it makes me feel like I'm bougie. Mm -hmm. uh, but get a coffee cup and get something to drink out of because we're about to talk about some taboo things with postpartum, pregnancy, and parenthood. So I have Dina, a.k.a. <laughs> delete if not allowed, here with me. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves a little bit. And then obviously you guys see Jordan. I'm back. She's back again. You guys know Jordan by now. So tell us about you guys. Oh, well, thanks for having us, first of all. Of course. So my name is Corey. I'm Rachel. We're from Delete If Not Allowed, or Dina, if you will. We're a mom podcast, too, and we really focus on kind of like what you guys do, talking about things that maybe aren't necessarily talked about, and like supporting moms, and like what can we really do to make a difference, and just different topics yeah. ranging there. Different, like, non-traditional paths to motherhood, yes. too, is something that yeah. we focus on a lot. I was a single mom by choice. I chose to have my daughter with a donor so that I could be a mom, because I was very anxious, too, and didn't have someone in my life. And then shortly after she was born, I fell in love and got married. And now I have a second baby with my husband. So my family came together in sort of a non-traditional way. Corey and I have been friends for a long time. And so this podcast, we like just started, I guess, not even a year ago. In August. In yeah. August to yeah. start like talking about some of the things that matter to us and that we talk about regularly or that and we, we wish that people talked about or like yeah. told us before we had kids and like i my family came together in a more traditional way which i didn't necessarily anticipate but we had kids within six months of each other i didn't necessarily think it was going to happen either so it all worked out and here we are and i actually reached out to them because i loved how i think it's great to have different moms come together because everybody has different experiences but also yes. similar experiences. So I thought it'd be really cool for us to join. And when we were talking, we decided to talk about postpartum bodies and intimacy. So get ready, because this is about to be real freaking juicy. <laughs> Spicy, Buckle juicy, up. whatever you want to call it. I do ask all of my people who come on to tell us three things about you, just to like get to know you, that's not mom related, because you are someone that's not a mom. So what are three things that we should know about you guys? Well, I think the first thing is that we've been friends since we were sophomores in high school. So we tried to do the math. Wow. Um, I have an English degree, so it's hard for me. <laughs> but, uh, and it's 16 years and maybe some change that we've been friends. So like, and we have been through the thick of it, the thick of it. like the high of high, the low of the lows, <laughs> all like seen each other at various states. So we've been, we've been through it. Yeah. And then the second thing that I'll share is a highlight moment in our friendship, which was Corey promising me that I would be maid of honor in her wedding bathroom of a casino in Atlantic, Atlantic City, City while we were drunk. <laughs> were you? She was like, yeah, and, and she, I was. And okay. You know, just, you know, again, we met in high school. That was sort of a snapshot of where our friendship yep. landed. I don't even know when that was, but over well, a well, we had, ago. Yeah, we had the same, we had every single class together one year just by happenstance. Yeah. And then I am an only child, which is very different from you. So we just, even though we're best friends and we parent the same way i think we just have very different perspectives yeah. yeah yeah well and the other thing you should share is that you are pregnant oh and i am pregnant. <laughs> she is. hello yeah, 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 yeah. so postpartum body image is very much on my mind right now um, but, yeah. when are you due uh, first week of june okay so. so you'll be dealing kind of what we're talking about right in the summer in the too. imminent there yeah summer my favorite time <laughs> to deal with postpartum bodies i love it it's great to be pregnant, though, during the winter. Oh, yeah. Because chunky sweaters, leggings. You're just not sweating, which is great. Like, yeah, being pregnant true. in the summer is like, oh, like yep. the seventh circle of hell. So I think I timed, I didn't time it out on purpose that way, but I think it, just it, it panned out pretty well. First week of June, I get off the the August <laughs> Before train. Before it gets too hot. Yeah. I, I had say, my that son. That was you, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. yeah. I had my son in April, and so I was pregnant, like, end of August, September-ish. I never had to deal with the really hot. Yep. Yeah. As someone so, who had both children in September and October, <laughs> yeah, shitty. third trimester, <laughs> July and August, oh. it was rough. I will say, though, that, like, my pregnancy body, I really came to enjoy and mm -hmm. love. And I loved, you know, I had maternity bathing suits. Like, mm -hmm. I had a lot of, like, cute summer dresses that you were, were, like, like in your era. I really, I, I loved being pregnant. I loved feeling my baby. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I was totally also ready for, ready to give birth and get 
my child on the other side. But in terms of like going to work pregnant, because the first time I was pregnant was COVID and I could just hide out in my house and didn't have to go anywhere. But this time I was like going into the office more yeah. and a little more like, but I had some really cute, cute, cute vibes, I feel like as a pregnant yeah, person. Right. And I also, I skip, I also got married pregnant, which is something that I didn't expect yeah. to do, but we decided to get married three weeks before the baby came. And yeah. so That's I was wow. like, oh my God, like, should I do this? And everyone was like, wait till after the baby, because then... Maybe you could drink, they say. It's like, okay, well, You can whatever. drink, but also I feel like behind that, too, was, like, the, the implication that, you know, you wouldn't... That you'll look different. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And, like, I was just, like... I had a super cute, like, boho, like, you know, hippie Aww. girl dress and my bump. It and it was really sweet. And I'm really happy I did it. But enjoyed... I enjoyed that element of being pregnant, for sure. That's I awesome. didn't enjoy being pregnant, but I loved my pregnant body. Yeah. I loved my pregnant body, but I hated being pregnant. Mm -hmm. I didn't like feelings of everything, the out of control. I didn't like that. But I did miss my pregnant body, and I still miss my pregnant body. Mm. Like, looking back at my belly, I loved my belly. I just don't like the aftermath. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that, too, like, being pregnant this time around, like, the with my daughter when I was pregnant, it was COVID. So, like, no one would have known that I was pregnant. Like, yeah, I right. was, we were in the era of, like, Zoom and Teams or whatever. Like, everyone always saw me from the chest up. So, like, every meeting I go on, they'd be like, stand up and turn to the side. Like, let us see your belly. Like, this is pregnant. And you don't carry it. Like, I see your face. No. You don't carry it in your face. Your no. face isn't swollen. You, your face is, like, thin and perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's the contour. I, like, I have, like, a, a belly, but it's yes. not, like, I, I feel like people, and I, like, have, like, mixed feelings on my pregnant body, right? Like. I'm so lucky. This is a gift. Da, 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 da. Like all that good yep. stuff. But it's also like, okay, I look different. Like I'm already like an overweight person before I was pregnant. So like navigating, like being pregnant when that's your situation can be kind right. of difficult. Cause like, okay, do I just look like I had too many Cheetos or do I look like there's a baby there? Like you have that weird, like beer gut time. Like I hate that part. Like now yeah. that it's like, okay, I think it's kind of obvious now that like, I didn't just have a big breakfast. Like there is something in there. Yep. So like, that's cool. I'm happy when I get to the end part, but like people just comment so much on your pregnant body. I feel and it's just like yeah. who asked you literally right and yes. like people they're like you don't even have a bump like you don't even look pregnant you don't even this or like oh my or when you get to the end like oh my god like that baby's about to fall out of you it's like yeah I, it's on my body i know like you yeah. don't have to tell me and i just it's like people think they have such a license to just say things to you and it's like please stop and that does not stop after you have or a baby. touch you or touch you oh, that <laughs> don't is... touch your pregnant woman's belly I out there deal with that i coming from a different perspective so i've mentioned this you know before on the podcast and i mentioned to you before we Started, I had an IUGR baby, uterine growth restricted, if you don't know what that means. And so my pregnancy was really different. Yeah. And I craved wanting to look pregnant. I craved mm. wanting to have that belly because I really didn't look pregnant until yeah. my last month, wow. maybe two months before. I mean, I could tell because I see myself every day, but other people couldn't. Right. I was eight weeks pregnant at my wedding. But at that point, I had been puking so much that I actually was the skinniest I had ever been. Yeah. So then, because I didn't get big, I, like, the whole time was like, oh, man, I just want to, like, be able to, like, look pregnant and feel pregnant. Totally. I definitely felt it because I was sick all the time. Yeah. And... But you feel like almost you're faking it. Kind yes. Of. Yeah. yeah. Part of me, I feel like because I didn't look pregnant, I had to explain to people, you know, I'm actually in my third trimester and I'm struggling right yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me yes. sit down, please. Well, and I'm sure, too, like, again, just the range of insensitive things people yes. say oh, is yeah. like, oh, my God, well, you look so good. And right. you're sitting there like, Especially I would after you get I know I'm not to... having a healthy baby. Yeah. yeah I was going to say I'm that. not growing. My body is not nurturing my child the way it's supposed to be. And people are like, well, you look great and you're going to bounce right back. You know? And you're like, thanks, that does your friend. That's a lie. I hate that. <laughs> and I didn't bounce right back either. Like, I'm still not in, like, clothes that I ever was before. Right. Which is fine. And I know when we were talking about talking about this topic, a lot of it is how you feel about yourself. Totally. You know? So whether people are commenting on your body, which they shouldn't to begin with, I always say, never tell someone, oh, you look great, you look thin. Or, yeah. oh, you put on weight. Like, just leave it out. Yeah. Like, do you have to comment? Yeah, like, you unless just, there's a million other asking. things you could comment on. Like, right. you're, even if you say, like, you're glowing, I'd rather you say that to me than, like, right. you don't even look. <laughs> like, just yeah. think about that. And I think there's, like, two, like, narratives, right? It's, like, yeah. the bounce back of yep. it all, which whatever and then also like people who bounce back well but it's like that takes a lot of work like right. it's a lot of time for that and some people's bodies just don't or like the old me is no like i can never get back there like and and look at that in like a negative way instead of a right. positive way like 
But are we supposed to be back there? Yeah. Right? Because yeah. now we have to carry and babies. And yeah. now we're, you know, if you're breastfeeding, you're breastfeeding. And your body is not the same because... Because no, you went through something completely. Exactly. You got, like, ripped apart. You grew a well, human. And as somebody who tried to conceive for years with, with a previous partner, you know, I spent so much time at war with my body, hating my body, being yeah. mad at my body, that yeah. by the time I finally was able to have a baby and, like, you know... I mean, I'm and the labor was very traumatic for me, but I remember being in the hospital like, I just have to go home with a baby. Like, I just hope I, I'm going to get a baby at the end of this. Like, it was yeah. so, like, for so long, right? And then I got the baby home and I was like, I was so proud of my body that that happened. Yes. That I felt like it was a real, like, postpartum for me was like... I, I loved it. And, I, and again, my body did look a little different than it, than it had, but my body, again, just, I don't know, for me, like, post being 19 years old, like, and just going through all my fertility journey and different fertility meds and then a divorce and all this stuff. Like, my body had fluctuated in a lot of ways, I feel like, through my 20s. That by the time I finally, like, f had this baby, I was just like... I love this body. This body is amazing. This body brought me my child. Like I felt so empowered, so excited. And and just like, I also felt like sexy. I yeah. really did. And again, I was a single mom. So it's not like I had a partner to like through the pregnancy or after to really like, I don't know, show up for me in any kind of physical consistent way. Yeah. And so I remember, I felt like I had a lot of that energy that I was just like, I don't know what to do with all this. <laughs> like, and yeah. I started dating not that long after she was born. And for me, that was like a connection. I don't know if it was all the oxytocin or just me feeling like <laughs> so good in the, in my body. But I was like, I feel like ready. I feel like I could connect with another human being. I would connect physically with a man right now. And it's very different than the moms that I was talking to who like eight weeks postpartum were like, really struggling to connect with their partner physically or even yeah. now as as a mom of two with a six month old and a husband you know and it's the same you know it's yeah. very different so, i kind of kind of want to strangle you <laughs> right. a little bit yeah i know i know because <laughs> <laughs> i was out here dating being like i can't wait like i'm going on the date with this guy and everyone else was like I was I like, can't communicate up. with my husband. Like, we haven't had sex in so long. Like, it's really hard. I remember the choice. I was like, how is she doing this? Like, what is she... Just, be, like, I think my postpartum experience, like, I had a traumatic labor delivery, you know? I went to therapy, worked through that. But, like, I hemorrhaged when I gave birth. Like, I didn't look pregnant by the time I left the hospital because I lost so much blood. Like, I was oh, so right. sick in the beginning of my pregnancy, so I didn't, like, gain mm -hmm. a lot. Like, I also didn't look super pregnant at the, just because I had... My body went through a lot of changes. My people would always say to me, they'd be like, oh, my God, it doesn't look like you had a baby. And that was so invalidating. Like. Same. Yeah, I, I did. Just, and it was I really, agree. it was really hard. Like I had a really, it, it was physically tough. Like I'm tired. Like I would be like, well, there's stitches there. Like you could look, but like, <laughs> just like, why do people think like, you look great. Like I was wearing like jeans, I think one of the days, but it was postpartum. It was these jeans I'm wearing now. They're postpartum <laughs> or they're maternity jeans. Like, so th this is not real. I go ahead. You're wearing jeans. That's so brave. Postpartum shut up yeah <laughs> like it's just like don't say anything and like i'm trying to figure out who i am now i remember like i look kept looking in the mirror and be like it does look like i had a baby like what did, did that really happen because like mm -hmm. covid already you're just like in such a twilight zone and right. it just like makes you question everything and like it's just so invalidating of the experience you had which i'm sure you know you can relate to as well but i had the completely opposite than all of you guys <laughs> so i was a size two mm -hmm. before i got pregnant and Again, I told you guys, my pregnancy, I loved being pregnant. It was great. Eight weeks after I gave birth, went to the doctors, did the checkup, whatever, and I was breastfeeding. So I'm like, I'm going to lose the weight. This is going to be great. It's just going to fall off of me. Twelve weeks went by. The scale did not move. My body did not change. The hardest part for me was not fitting into any of my clothes because this body is not an extra small no more. <laughs> I can't wear little kid clothes. And I had a really, Jordan knows this, I go back and forth still. And it's not, I accept it a lot more now. I don't know how to style my body because I'm not that stick right. figure. I will say I love my boobs. Mm -hmm. I only have boobs now, so <laughs> this is great. I don't have to wear push-ups. But I don't love any part of this. Mm, I have felt so, so uncomfortable. Intimacy sucked for a little while because I was uncomfortable with myself. I'm like, how can you love my body compared to mm. what it was? Yeah. Because it changed so much. So for me, it was, I had to learn how to love my body. I also used to be a big body lifter and like lifting and cardio and everything. I finally just now I'm starting to do it. And I think it's because I'm like, okay with my body. Yeah. Like I'm like, yeah, this is fine. I just need to learn how to style it because mm -hmm. it's just not. Well, it's so different also. Like it's just. Yes. 
and like learning to accept that like maybe the things that you used to love like you right. just don't love anymore and that's okay yes. but it's like who am I like and yes. you're busy like you know yes, I mean? like yes. I think that's the thing is like there's such a I just went on a work trip and for two days like I was just like you know trying to be on a work trip and manage my work and manage my time and my schedule and our recording and our podcast and I was like this is really hard and I'm just taking care of myself right. like my normal job is taking care of other human beings too like my children like and yep. you know and my dog and you know like managing all these things so it's like I yeah that that has got to be a really big shock because you're you're every there's no similar sort of frame of reference like every no. life as you know it has completely shifted and I think that like yep. not it's got to be really disorienting to not be able to feel like yourself you mm -hmm. know and I think that like emotionally and hormonally we all go through those changes but for me like the physical connection into my body again like I was able the first time around to really dig into like a feeling of empowerment and, yeah. and you know, enjoy in my body. Do you think it's because you didn't have a partner? You know, it's like very interesting. I don't yeah. know. Like I think about that a lot is like, I mean, when I think back to single mom, single motherhood by choice, one of the best things I feel like about it, because, you know, not everybody in my life understood it. And some people mm -hmm. felt like, you know, it's a little Absolutely. selfish to do yeah. it maybe. And, you know, to be so intentional about bringing a child into the world. And, you know, I had, I had a lot of support, but I didn't have a ton of like extra resources. You know, there's, there is privilege in being able to make that choice for sure, but it wasn't like, like I was just, yeah. you know, had a ton of money and was like, I'm just going to do this. But it was like really important to me to do it. And one of the things I loved about the experience of, of doing pregnancy alone and the first six months of raising a child alone is you do whatever feels right. Like yep, right. literally yeah. you don't want to cook. You don't cook. Yeah. There's dishes in the sink. Leave them for five days. Like who? Who cares? You, you know, know like literally there's no one else in the house but <laughs> yeah. you and this baby. Like yep. you think that you want to try it this way. You don't have to talk to anybody. <laughs> like, well, that's you know. what I'm wondering because you're, you're not sitting there saying like, okay, what, where are you at? Where's your head at? Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. yeah. And it's not like Jordan and I talk about this a lot. We have phenomenal partners. Mm -hmm. There are things that they do that really piss us off and really irritate us. That's oh, why I'm yeah. wondering if, like, yeah. the first time around, <laughs> you didn't have that person where you had to worry about those things. And I didn't have to worry. You didn't have to show up for that person. I didn't have to show no, up for them. Show up I didn't have to worry yeah, about them shifting it. how they saw me. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and this is what I always say about my husband is he met me when I was eight weeks postpartum. So he only knows me as a mom. Like, whereas a lot of couples, it's a big shift, like, yeah, of who you were before kids shift. and then after. Yes. And for him, it's like, I always joke, I'm like, you haven't seen me, like, without postpartum hormones. Because what happened is when my daughter was one, a few months after one, we got pregnant, like, with yep. our second. And so, like, they say it takes two years for your body to come. Yes. And yeah. it, everything. And I'm like, you haven't seen it yet. Like, you know what I mean? We, like, joke about it. But at the same time, I think it's... I am really grateful and it's really different this with us with a second baby because now I have a partner and one of the biggest things for me literally postpartum like days home from the hospital that I felt and I remember texting you about it it was like I want I need him to like physically comfort me yeah like I wasn't talking about like anything sexual but I wanted to and craved you. that like intimacy yeah. of just like come here like get in my arms like but we're wrapping our arms around our two babies. And I remember, yeah. like, and even still, like, it's yeah. something really and also hard you're for both me. both absolutely exhausted. Oh, we're yeah. exhausted. And we're <laughs> dividing and conquering now between two people. And it's, like, good that there's the two of us because we have two babies. But, like, yeah, but there's man, nothing left. When you're doing man-on-hand -man coverage, like, you can't yeah. have the coach's conference. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's, it's, it doesn't work that way. And totally. Like, like I'm like, oh, like, how is that going to go this time? Because last time it was, again, like... COVID, it was different. Like, right. yeah. you know, and I didn't feel like my body changed a whole lot, but I didn't feel comfortable with it after. And I was just like, what do I do with this? But like, my husband had no, didn't see me that way at all. Like, he saw yeah. me as just yeah. like, I, you're beautiful, you're so beautiful, I'm so attracted to you, like, I love you, da da da, which was great. And I love that. And I was so thankful we didn't have to go through that. But I feel like I had to, kind of like you mentioned, I had to you accept to myself yourself. first before I was like, okay, we can allow things to happen. Side note, Jordan and I yeah. were not friends until we became moms. Like, we did not know each other mm. until mommyhood. And it was, Jordan's like my best friend forever now. Mm -hmm. Because it just, the, the mom chemistry was there. We parent very similar. We were raised very similar, which was yeah. really weird because it's like, whoa. So we finally started, like, getting close to about like talking about those things and she said one night and I said to her I was like yeah like it's still painful mm -hmm. to have sex and it's horrible because it's like you want to have sex when you're finally at the point you're like yes <laughs> let's go but, but then after <laughs> you're like oh maybe I don't yeah and it's like oh my god this is horrible like this hurts this is uncomfortable like I can't even enjoy this right. 
And then that even just fucks with your mind even more. Yes. Yeah. But it's just broken now, yes. I guess. That's and like, exactly yeah. how I've been feeling. Yes. Because for me, it's pure exhaustion. Yep. And I love my husband, but, like, I'm, like, at the point where I'm, like, sometimes, like, don't even look at me. You know, because yeah, I'm tired. I my teeth. Exactly. Well, like being touched out, which I remember hearing that phrase for his mom, and I was like, "How does that even happen?" It's like, no, it does. Yeah. Um, but like, I like, like I, the ick. Yeah. Also, it's like there's sometimes where I'm like, don't to like. I know you're like trying to hold my hand over, but it's like don't. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna just fake snore. So I don't, don't know. Do I that. feel like I I feel like I am like, and this is the other thing though, guys. Like I'm a newlywed. Do you know what I, I mean? Say, like, it's and so I'm craving. I feel like we're both craving intimacy so much all the time, and yeah. there's just no time for it. And then when there yeah. is, there's so much pressure on that moment. Like you know, because it's like we. You know, we finally get a night alone or something, which I think has happened like once, and I was recovering from yeah. surgery through it. Or the so baby's it's like... finally sleeping through the night, and you yeah. know they're not going to wake up. Yeah, or or, or you're just like you're like looking at the monitor, and you're like, mm, when does this end? He got ten minutes. <laughs> like, when is she going to wake up? She's been sleeping through it for eight weeks, but like tonight feels like the night she doesn't. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, I felt very fortunate. Like after I had a baby, like I like sex did not hurt for me. It felt better for me. Like it was, I was like, okay, like this is great. Like love this, but. But and knowing that, but also knowing that I'm so fucking tired. Yeah. But, like, I just don't want to do that anymore. We can't, yep. like, go out and have date nights. We do, like, right. the fun, fun things you used to do, like, when you didn't have children. And it's just, like, that whole part of your life is just scratched for a minute. Yes. And right. when you're in the thick of it, it's like, I'm never going to get that back. Like, what is what is my intimate life going to be like? And, well, and I mean, it, it does come back in a way. I was going to say, though, I think that, like, we're all still in the throes of it. Your, right. your kids are. are, like, a, not even a year, They're right? not no. a year. Okay. No. So <laughs> yours are, like, what, just a year? I have two and a half and a six-month-old. And you are pregnant. Literally. No, I'm pregnant. And my, and my daughter just turned three. So, right. like, yeah. So we're all still in it. Yeah, yeah. So you're all in it. And, like, and people say it's, like, the... Like, with your partner, it's the most difficult, like, a year or two after having a baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so I, Josh and I keep reminding ourselves that. Like, yes. we love each other, we're good, but, like, there are days where it's just, like, man, because, you know what, we used to be, like, friends first, and now it's, like, we have to be parents first. Yeah. Mm. And friends, you know, so we're trying to kind of intertwine that. Yeah. Where it's, you know, right now, maybe we are not at that point, but we're, we have to be partners to get through this. Well, and the phrase, um, also before I had children, I didn't really understand it. Or when I was a single mom, the roommate Roommate phase, phase. like that that. feels very relatable now because again, like sleep in the same bed because my son wakes up literally five to 10 times a night still because he's getting tubes in his ears. Now he's getting all these ear pains. so So my husband works and I'm very grateful that, you know, right now. I don't have to, but that means that I'm doing every night shift. Yeah. So my husband's upstairs in our room and I'm in the guest bed, yeah. you know? Yeah. So And I work overnight four nights a week. Yeah. And it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, yeah, and my no. boyfriend works Monday through Friday and has to wake up at 5 a.m. So it becomes like, it has to be so intentional, right? right it really like, is. Like we went right. on a date for the first time in over six months when we were at my mom's. So even if we wanted to be sexually active, we were at my mom's house. <laughs> yeah, like, that's not, in my brother's bed. Yeah. 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 That, that's, that's a, a twin bed. Say that's yeah. a, that's Someone's going to fall off. Well, and it's a real boner killer right there. Yeah. 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 That's not. Mom's and we like shared the room with the baby. So the baby's right there. <laughs> oh, and you feel so guilty too with the baby's right there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you have to gauge. I guess every kid is different of how long till they're, they're that aware. I feel like Lola had <laughs> I could a... never do it. I, oh, really? I felt so fucking... <laughs> <laughs> like well i can't relate no judgment here no judgment no and there's no judgment but i just so she was just like also like a very like loud sleeper right so like yeah distracting i just takes a lot of focus well like i don't like uh, the baby grunting and me trying to do my thing like it's just not gonna work like, but we did kick her out of our room when she was seven weeks old so that helped us well that's the thing we, i co-slept and so when i first had lola well, it was lola and i against bed. the world and i was like I remember when I first, things started going really well with my husband. Yeah. I was like, so would you, like, want to stay over? It was New Year's. I invited him over. And I was like, do you want to, like, stay over? And he was like, well, where would I sleep? And I was like, mm. well, you could sleep in bed with us if you want. And he was like, I don't feel comfortable sleeping in bed with you and your daughter. And, yeah, yeah and remind everyone she was three months old. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, you can sleep on the 
the, the couch if you want. <laughs> but like the solution wasn't going to be that I moved Kicking my baby. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like this is, and it was even funny. Our first Valentine's Day, he gave me like a stuffed animal and he said it was like, it was a mom and baby and he thought they were two, but they were sewn together. And he was like, this is just very fitting for you and Lola. Aww. Like he got and respected that. Like I waited my whole life to do this. Right. Yep. She and I yep. were like attached at the hip. And so he was coming into that dynamic, and but eventually, change it. and I wasn't going to change it yeah. for anyone. Yeah. And I, I love him. And you know, I did for Lola she was so independent and it did make sense to transition her to the crib but this time around Annabelle she's been super sick like since she's been born with your mm -hmm. garden variety Literally daycare illness RSV COVID flu okay. we've had it all he's had everything rhino the stomach bug like yeah. it just has and just stopped. And, like, -stop. and when you're watching yeah. your kid like be sick like that and it's suffer horrible. right it's horrible because there's nothing you could do no. like we had to go to the hospital a couple times in mm -hmm. alley and it's just like Same. yeah well, well they, they can't tell you what's wrong they can't either. tell you what's wrong you she, just you know like something's not right yeah. and then sometimes they'll be like oh it's just a cold and you're, you this can't. is a horrible yeah. cold well but mean? then sometimes it's a cold but then five days later it's not yeah so it's like right. and so you're using all of your brain power to be like okay like what's wrong with my kid how do i fix it and then when you're like also if you have to like spend time in the hospital if they get admitted like and then your yes. part that's really stressful because only one parent can stay and like mm -hmm. my husband was like well i'll stay and i'm like i love you but no, <laughs> but you can't. Like, I, it's I have to do this. Also, like, Hoover, sleep apnea, and <laughs> see Papa Like, you bring it in. Yeah. But, like, uh, also, like, you just, you are heavy sleeper. Like, you don't wake up. Like, you right. can't. Like, yep. I had to, like, get in the hospital with her because she was, like, shaking the crib. It was a whole nightmare. But it's like, so all of your energy is expended on, like, making sure your kid's okay first because you should. I mean, there's a debate of who do you put first, your kid or your husband, which is a different story but Let's like answer that <laughs> i feel like we don't need to and we all agree so well you know what's actually really funny so i had a much harder time postpartum uh the second time and i remember saying to my husband like you know just just the emotions you know like yeah. i'm also just i have a partner who and i'm not making generalizations here but i have a partner who I am very feelings based. Everything to me is about how I feel. And yes. I have a partner that's very logic based. Yes. And so like, he'll be like, okay, me but that's how you feel. <laughs> and I'm like, right. Which is which, everything. That's it. That's like that's it. all that matters. Yeah, which is, is how I which feel. Which is my existence. And he'll be like, so. oh, but that's just a feeling. Right. So like we've had to work through some of that and we're still getting to know each other while right, parenting yeah. two kids, which is wild. I understand why people do it the other way around. <laughs> Cause it'd be really nice to have that foundation to go back on and be like, you know, well, Right. I know you, we've been together five years, you, you've seen me through this, this, and this, right? Like, some of this stuff is brand new. On the other hand, he never is able to mourn an older version of our relationship, either of us or, or each well, other. Well, you don't have anything to compare it to, way. which is kind of a blessing. And then when, when your kids are older, you'll have that time together right. without them. But I remember mm -hmm. saying to him at one point, you know, just like sobbing and just being like, you know... I feel like it's just really hard to figure out how to show up as like both a mom and a wife. And oh, he said so to me, he was like, and it, an employee. Agree. Oh an yeah. Employee. And a daughter and, and a, daughter, a sister and, and a friend cousin, and a podcast co-host. Yeah. And you know, and like, so, this is the relationship I stress about the least. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't understand that. Well, what Jay no, said to they, me, they don't feel like they have to turn themselves in so many different directions. No, they don't have to. Cause they Cause can they just don't. be a man everywhere. Yes. And it's like, great. You're they here. They can go take a shit without having to hold their baby at the same time. And everyone will be like, Oh my god, what an active father! You're just like, <laughs> but again, Jay... our men are our our men are great. We, are. we, we all agree on that. Love them. They are, but, but... they're pains in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> but what Jay said to me that I'll never forget is he said he was like, if there are moments where you have to choose between being a good mother and being a good wife, always choose being a good mother and yeah. never apologize for that. And that was like the so kindest great. thing he could say to me yeah. because I literally just felt like I don't know how to show up in this marriage right now. And he was just like, and so in a way it was great and permission for me to just lean into what I know how to do, which is like be mama bear. The problem is, is, or whatever the reality is, is that the thing that has been prioritized the least is our connection. Yep. And, and that's so still, even if everyone's like, okay, this is how it has to be right now, that still t t doesn't make it any less difficult on yeah. you and yeah. everybody Absolutely. else. Right. Like, and we've had to go through like a lot, like I joke, like I can never do anything simple in my life. Cause I just can't like <laughs> me either. <laughs> it's like, we've had to have a lot of these like really stressful situations and like, we've had to like have these conversations of like, okay, like what is going to happen? Like we had a a scare earlier in this pregnancy where they, they thought I had a developmental cord, so that baby would probably be IUGR. Yep. And, like, you know, we have to deliver them early and da da da. And, like, if you look at Bellmetch's cord, like, first of all, don't, don't Google it. But it's terrifying. Stay and, like, off Google. They, <laughs> well, they said to us, like, stay off Google. My husband was yeah. like, okay. And he did. And I was like, not me. Walking to the car, <laughs> people, people bop. I was like, 
Chris, this is terrible. Like, what happens? Yeah. With blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, well, they told us not to go. It's like, let's not. They said it's, it's going to be okay because I'm like, where it is? I said, I need to know what could happen to my baby. Well, like, I'm just, I'm like the blind faith you have in this woman. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I trust nobody. Like, it's just, I'm like, I, I, I But can't. I trust Google. But I trust Google. <laughs> and I trust mom's on message boards because that's clearly valid. Um, but... And so, like, I, like, we had to have that conversation when I, I, like, got home and I, it was just so emotional for me because I was like, I can't, like, this was, like, a pregnancy after a loss. Like, I just couldn't fathom, like, anything else going wrong. I was like, I can't do anything else around the house. He was like, well, tell me what you need to do. I said, look around and pick something. You do, do it. that thing. <laughs> you live here. So, t- talking about Google is I'm in the social work field. So, we did a lot of research before finding out that I was pregnant and then going through trying to figure out, okay, what are the signs of postpartum depression, anxiety, so that way we could prevent it. Joke's on us, and it happened, and it wasn't until, like, 13 weeks I realized I was really struggling, but I didn't want to bring it up because Jimmy was working and going to school. He wasn't doing nothing. He was helping when he could, but I felt it was on me because I was out on maternity leave because I got 20 weeks of maternity leave, so I was out. I wasn't working. It's our duty to do those things and step in because they're doing the other thing, and then one day I had a mental breakdown, and he was like, you are not okay. Go get a coffee. All I did was go get a coffee, came back home when I was ready to come back home. But I felt like a brand new woman. And I think that's really important, too, is like people don't talk about how you do need to take a break by yourself and not going to the grocery store. And not taking a shower. And not like, taking a shower. And you're like, oh, like, let mom have a shower. It's like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Leave right. the freaking house without anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, though, that it's it, I think that similarly i guess i feel like it's my responsibility to communicate that to my partner like when i need it, it. Is. and it's really hard yes and i feel like people would just be like well, just say it and it's like I, it's hard for me i'm just before kids it was hard for me to identify what my needs Correct. were and then you get to the like comparing part yeah so that's yes. like, the competition ugh. josh and i have really had to work at and still work at every day it's like well i'm doing this and i'm doing that and i'm doing this instead of looking at it like now we call it the we so we try and say, we are doing mm. this. What do we need to do together? You, right? Like, yep. Josh might be going to work, and I might be with the baby, but we are doing what we have to do to make this work. Instead yeah. of the, well, I slept more, and you didn't sleep at all, and, you know, that comparing. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> It's hard to not fall into that trap, I feel. Yes. Well, and it's hard, like, again, with the idea that it's on the onus of us to communicate our mm-hmm. needs. It's yeah. hard to not set up an equation where we expect our partners to see. Like, right. if they really <laughs> loved us, they would. Why don't you Why don't this? they see that yeah. I'm doing all this and yeah. that I need help? Yeah. Because they don't. Because they don't. Like, they that's... think that we're fine because we're super women and we yeah. act like we're super women. Yeah. Right. No. You, you, can't. you can't prepare. You can't. And, but you know what? Here's to figuring it out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and like, you will figure it out. At some point, you can't prepare. You can. But speaking of postpartum bodies, loving our bodies, feeding our bodies. <laughs> oh my god. Cake. Love it. <laughs> I because love cake. we can always have cake. We can always let them eat cake. Let's eat cake. We're gonna enjoy this cake. Yeah. You want me All to the cut more it? reason. Yes. Oh. On that note, thank you, mamas, for tuning in for another episode of Woo. Moms with Moms. <laughs> as always, we're surviving and thriving as moms, because that's what we do. <laughs> Bye, besties. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you don't hit the subscribe button, you won't get notifications when I drop something like a video like this or a fun reel or anything. And if you haven't yet, go follow my freaking Facebook and my Instagram. It'll have some nice fun reels. It also has my website, so that way if you're interested in the Mom Network program, you can join. And for the less filtered, real, authentic version of myself, make sure you go follow my TikTok. And as always, mamas, please, 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 if you want to be on the show or if you want to be a part of the mentorship program or you need a mentor, don't forget to DM me, email me, whatever.